guys congratulations for showing up on the fourth tutorial video of banish search series i am so proud of you for showing up today you should be very proud of yourself to get yourself a pat on the back come on do it tell me in the comments that you actually did it come on inspire each other let's show up every day let's work on our dsa skills and let's just ace this we are going to enjoy this and actually today you will be one level up because you're going to be among those smart people who knows that you don't have to write the binary search code again and again you don't have to find the middle element and compare it again and again because it's the basic concept that has already been implemented in c++ libraries now don't hate me for making you write the code and understand in the previous videos you will need to you know understand how things work so that if required in a few advanced level problems you can actually write the code and sometimes interviewer can ask you to write the iterative code or actually implement the binary search code this can happen it has happened with me once that i used the c++ stl library functions that we are going to talk about today and the interviewer went like you know what don't use that actually write the code because i was done so fast and that's what happens when you use c++ stl code you use the already implemented library functions you look very smart you save a lot of time and you make things so much easier for you and it's very easy to understand also just three simple functions you use it a few times you will get used to it it's a bit confusing people do some mistakes but once you start using it you're going to do it really really well so without wasting any time let's get started so there are three stl functions that you should know the first one is simple binary search so you have to give start address and address and a value to find basically you tell that okay i need to find this value between this starting point and this ending point and you just return me true or false whether this value exists or it does not exist so it returns a true or false value but see what will happen is in a lot of instances you will not just require true or false you will need the exact index at which the value is present right so for that we have two more functions first one is lower bound so it returns an iterator pointing to the next smallest just greater than or equal to the number so it can be greater than or equal to the number so suppose we have to our value to find was 2 2 does not exist in our sorted array okay then what will happen it won't return 2 maybe if 3 is there it will return 3 so greater than or equal to if 2 is there it will return 2 if 2 is not there then it will return the number greater than in upper bound what will happen is that it will return the value that is always greater than see this is the only major catch between lower bound and upper bound rest everything is same you pass one first and last value and you have to find some value between that lower bound returns iterator pointing to the value greater than or equal to while upper bound returns iterator pointing to greater than so it will never return the iterator pointing to equal to one it will always be greater than i know if it is not clear we will we will take examples we will understand probably don't worry at all this is just the beginning okay one thing that you have to note in that in all of these three functions we are talking about iterators okay so what are iterators they basically point to the first value second value third value you can do plus minus iterators and you can go ahead and behind also so first value and end value and one thing that you notice everywhere so here there is a square bracket and here there is normal bracket why is that so here first value is included the last value is not included in for loops also if you have written for iterator equal to array dot start and iterator not equal to array dot end not equal to meaning it is not the last index it is not pointed to the last index it is actually outside of that so there is one value that is outside the array and this is what it is pointing to so basically the first and the last value that you give the first value will be included in while finding the last value will not be included so we'll find till one last value before this gets a bit tricky sometimes because see usually you will be finding in the array itself so when you pass uh, array dot end you are essentially meaning the point after the array is finished but sometimes when you're dealing with like a portion of array this can be tricky so you need to understand this properly i will explain it don't worry similarly in lower bound also if you notice there will be square bracket for first and not the square bracket a normal bracket for the last and see in the and in binary search it is mentioned the address of the next contiguous location of the last element of the array so let me make the diagram and show you now see if this is our array okay so this is the first element say there are these many elements so 1 2 3 4 5 so this is your array dot begin 
ठीक है दिस इज योर एरे डॉट एंड सो वेन यू पास फर्स्ट एंड लास्ट यू एक्चुअली पास एरे बिगिन एंड यू पास एरे एंड इन ऑल द थ्री फंक्शन सो दी एस टेल इज गोइंग टू लुक फॉर द नंबर इन दिस इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू इंक्लूड दिस वैल्यू राइट सो सपोज यू हैव टू फाइंड फ्रॉम दिस टू दिस टू मॉरो राइट सो यू आर गोइंग टू राइट फाइंड फ्रॉम एरे बिगिन टू एरे बिगिन प्लस हाउ मच सो वन टू थ्री राइट यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड इन दिस मच and not only in this we are going to actually write the code and see so you will be clearer to explain to you properly i have written some code so here you can see i have taken a vector which is 1 2 3 4 5 right and when we do binary search what does binary search returns it returns true or false basically 0 or 1 so first i searched whether 4 exists from starting till ending now ending doesn't mean fifth element it means the element there is something after that so does it exist between this Till the last element, and the last element is not included. So what is included? One, two, three, four, five is included. Okay, so it does exist. So we got one. Now we had to find between vector begin and vector begin plus three. So vector begin is one, and when we do plus three, we go till one, two, three. We go till this element till fourth. Four is there, right? But when we do binary search, and when we pass the second iterator, that is not included. and that is why when we i search for 4 actually we get answer 0 because only 1 2 3 is there i am finding the element now when i do vector begin and vector begin plus 4 now i am searching between four elements because now when i go to plus 4 i am actually going till 5 and 5 is not being included when i do binary search and that is why i get the answer as 1 again to repeat it whenever we pass this second iterator that is actually not included we include till one uh, position before okay so if i am at the third position i am going to search from 0 to the second position if i am at the fourth position i am going to search from 0 at to the third position so search is clear right and similarly i have done for lower bound also but see in binary search we used to just get true or false whether the element exists or not in lower bound what i get i get iterator pointing to that index which is greater than or equal to the element now 4 is present in from beginning to end right so i will get the iterator which is greater than or equal to and because it is an iterator i can't just output the value if i try to output the value of an iterator i'm going to get an error so i actually do the addition subtraction and i had an iterator at vector dot begin so from doing minus vector dot begin i am getting the index at which it is present okay So four is present at index three. So see zero one two three. So we are getting the answer. Now again, when we do plus three, see binary search returned false, but this will return three only. Why? Because we have to find an element greater than or equal to. So at which index is a number greater than or equal to present? See even though four is not present in one two three. So what am I getting? I am getting the iterator pointing to the next element. right so i am getting the iterator pointing to the next element which is actually 4 but in this case it doesn't matter whatever it is pointing to i am just looking at the index so index is going to be that right 3 similarly over here it is going to be 3 i will suggest you to take more examples try writing code like this to understand each and every function properly because when you start implementing it in questions you are going to start getting confused See the main confusion that happens is between lower bound and upper bound. If you have seen the mock interview of mine with Sanket on my channel, you can see he, I confused him between lower bound and upper bound because usually people get confused in less than and greater than. See both lower bound and upper bound are for greater than only. Is this that lower bound is for greater than equal to upper bound is for greater than? There is no way to find less than. It is always greater than or equal to less than. You have to do bit tweaking. Okay. To explain you the difference between lower bound, upper bound, again I have written some code. So I have taken another vector one, one, two, three. Here when we find lower bound of one, okay, lower bound means greater than or equal to. So it is going to send me the first index at which greater than or equal to is present. So I am getting the zeroth index. When I do upper bound. I am. I am not going to get greater than or equal to. I am going to get only greater than. At what index is greater than value present? At second index. So that is the difference between lower bound and upper bound. Let's quickly write the code to the question that we saw in the last video using STL functions, and you will realize how simple it becomes using STL. 
So what was the question? We are given an array which can have duplicate elements also. So here you can see 5 can appear many times. We have to give back the index where it comes for the first time and the last time. So we have to do that, right? So like last time, we are going to take two variables in first and last. So how to find the first index? To find the first index, we basically need the index at which the value is greater than or equal to, right? That is what we want. So what are we going to use? We are going to use lower form. Yes, you are right. So first value is actually going to become equal to lower bound. We have our array. So this is array. So if we just write array, it is actually pointing to the first point itself, right? And when we do array plus n, it is actually pointing to the element after n, right? So we are going n steps ahead. So we are going to search from array to array plus n and we are going to we what value do we have to find x right so this is first and see note lower bound returns an iterator so this is an iterator we need index so what we are going to do like there we were doing minus vec dot begin here we are going to do minus array because array itself is just pointer pointing to the first element okay because array itself is basically a pointer pointing to the first element similarly how are we going to find last now last is a bit tricky thing because see using upper bound we can find the element that is greater than or equal to right see basically if this is our array we are finding 1 2 2 2 2 2 3 4 right our lower bound is going to return this because uh, if we are finding 2 then we are going to have lower bound is this because this is greater than or equal to our upper bound is going to return this because we need greater than so when we need the last one, we can just do minus one and get this index, right? Similarly, say we were finding for the last value. Say it was one, two, two, three, three, four, 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 right? So if we were finding for four, then our lower bound would actually return this. Upper bound would return this. And when we do minus one, we would actually get this only. So it will work in all the cases. So for upper bound, this minus one is the tricky part. For lower bound, we can find and this is why it is very, very important to understand what iterators point to, what lower bound returns, what upper bound returns because if we don't take care of this, we can actually mess up into be really bad because we will think we are doing right but it is just one small thing that we have to keep in mind. That is why we need to practice more and more problems. So here what we are going to do, we are going to write upper bound. We are again going to pass a pointer pointing to the first element then pointer pointing to the elements after the array then we are going looking for x then minus array so that we have the index and not the iterator and minus one because we are working with upper bound and we need the last index if the question was find the index after uh, this x has stopped occurring then we just have to return upper bound right now we have found first and last good now let's think of the edge cases what if our value does not exist only? That can also be a possibility, right? If the value does not exist only, our actually lower bound, upper bound are going to return the first index or some index in between. Why? Because it is going to return us any index where the value is greater than or equal to x, where the value is greater than x. So we have to first make sure the value exists. We have to put that check. Let me show you from the diagram. Say in this particular array, we pass x equal to zero. So when we pass x equal to zero, we actually get this as lower bound and upper bound because we get any value that is greater than or equal to x, right? Similarly, suppose the array was say two, five, eight, nine, and we were searching for say six, we would get the answer as eight, right? The index at uh, which eight is present because we would get some answer which is greater than or equal to six. We don't do that. So for that, we have to put a check to make sure that the value that we are finding actually exists. And how do we check whether a value exists or not? For that, yes, we use our third function, which is binary search. So here, we, all we have to do is put up a check that if binary search returns false, so not means it is going to return false. And where are we going to search from array to array plus n? And what are we searching for x? If it is not present, then we will just return minus one from there itself. We don't need to go ahead only. Otherwise, if we have found, then we are going to return first last. Let's run it and see, hopefully it will run. Let's submit. We have passed all the test cases. So yes, this worked and as you can see, the 
coat now looks so much smaller you have done much smarter things you are also avoiding making mistakes of greater than or equal to or less than and all you don't have to put checks you just use the stl libraries and you use it so gracefully this is what you are supposed to do in interviews so we are going to practice more such questions and that is why you have to show up tomorrow we have to practice more questions okay you have to promise me you will show up tomorrow press the bell icon and the subscribe button and it will mean so much to me thank you so much you guys are awesome